Orale, Cholo Trucker, Moss Movies and Shows. And here we got Selena and Yolanda, The Secrets Between Them. It's a small docuseries, man, um, about the uh, the killing of Selena back in 1995. And, uh, you know, uh, Yolanda Saldivar, the one who pulled the trigger in the uh, in the hotel room, uh, comes out and I guess you know tells all the all the secrets that was going on between them and all that. So I found it kind of interesting, man. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna check it out. Now this is only two episodes long. I went ahead and I watched it on Peacock. I know it's a it's streaming on a couple of other um, on a couple of other platforms. I think Hulu has it. Um, uh, not. I think. Uh, I think even YouTube TV. There's a few other uh, streaming services you could find it on. I went ahead. I watched it on Peacock. Now, my beautiful crazy local wife refuses to watch this. I don't think she will ever ever watch this. She was a huge fan of Selena when she was a young girl, just like so many people were. And I'm not gonna lie, homie. I was a fan of her as well. Still am. I still do like uh, some of her jams every now and then when we're driving or something. Yeah, we'll go ahead. We'll bump a little Selena, dog. You know, that uh, a lot of her music is evergreen, homes. You could bump that stuff and it's it's freedom and dog. So, uh, and by the way, those um those jams today, they do get the party going. Okay, they do get the party going. There's a lot of cover bands out there that cover her music. And uh, when her jams start playing, homie, uh, it does get everybody up and going, man. And um, my mom, I remember my mom, she was really devastated when uh, when she heard what had happened. You know, she was a big fan of Selena. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and get to this uh, docuseries. So I was... um. I was a little curious. I know my real crazy look, my wife was a little upset the fact that I watched this because apparently I don't know this. Okay. But this is her saying that apparently this money or some of the money is actually going to Yolanda. Um, I don't know if they're putting it on her books or she's saying it to her family or whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> my real crazy look, my wife, man, she refuses to watch it. So I watched it on my own. And, um, I found it somewhat interesting, but very slow, and it never really got anywhere that interesting. Now, why do I find it somewhat interesting, but yet I never found it that interesting? Well, let me explain, okay? And I'm not going to kill it too much, but I'm on a, a little bit of spoiler alerts here, okay? I was interested because I'm like, okay, the secrets. Okay, cool. Let's hear the secrets, right? And I, it, it was kind of like listening to a joke, right? Um, Listening to a joke and then waiting for the punchline because you're like, oh, man, this joke sounds like it's going to be great. Like, it's going to be great. It's going to make me laugh, man. I It's already got me chuckling. Like, I'm just waiting for the punchline. And then the punchline comes and you're like, ah. The telling of the joke was really good. But once you get to it, it's like, yeah, it just it. It had me intrigued, but it didn't make me laugh, right? So going to the docuseries here, it had me intrigued. I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to get somewhere. We're going to get somewhere. We're going to get somewhere. And we never really got anywhere. Um, All right. So Yolanda, th this uh, docuseries is coming now at a pretty sensitive time because Yolanda is due for parole um, in a year. In pretty much a year, uh, in 2025, man, and uh, you know she was sentenced. I believe it was 30 to life. So she's up for parole. Doesn't mean she's gonna get it. Uh, there's a lot of people upset that don't want her to get out, and then there's some people that are upset that actually want her to get out. So, so you know they can uh, be free, man. To uh, I don't know heckle her or whatever, man. I don't know, man. I'm not gonna condone any of that stuff, but nonetheless. Um, when it comes to the docuseries, um, I was kind of expecting 
something more. What I got out of it was basically putting out a little bit of dirt on Selena. And by the way, maybe it's true, you know, and some of the stuff that was on there seemed pretty legit. I don't know whether to believe it or not. And I'm not even sure it matters because I'm I, I'm going to get to why at the end. But let me get to all this, right? It's like, oh, Selena was having an affair. She was cheating on her husband with this doctor from Monterrey, Mexico. It's like, oh, oh okay. You know, like, like that's interesting. You know, don't get me wrong. It's, it, it's interesting. It's like, oh, all right. It's like, uh, you know, uh, Yolanda, she was never embezzling money. She was writing these checks to herself so they can go to Monterrey so Selena could have this uh, affair with this doctor. And it's like, huh, all right, it's, that's, that's a little far-fetched, but, oh, you know, okay, all right, you know, so be it. Um, that the father, uh, what's his name? Ah, shoot, I forgot his name. Abraham, I believe it is. Hey, he was a really mean dude. He was a really threatening guy. And I think everybody already kind of knew that. Right. Everybody already kind of knew that he was not the nicest camper. He was not the happiest camper. You know, even in the movie, you know, played by Edward James Olmos, he was, uh, yeah, he, he was portrayed as somewhat of an a-hole. Even in the, the show, the series, I don't know if anybody caught that one. That was a really good one. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, he was kind of portrayed as somewhat of a Neho on that series as well. So everybody kind of knew that he wasn't Mr. Nice Guy. I never heard or seen anybody say that, hey, he was a really super nice dude. So I'm not really sure what kind of, you know, um, dirty laundry you're trying to bring out on him outside of the fact that she was really scared. She was scared of him. He was very threatening. Um, there was nothing that she was able really to prove though. It's like, oh, her tires were slashed. Um, there was a crack on the windshield and, you know, uh, the guy who was fixing the windshield said, oh, it looked like it was done by a bullet. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but th there was nothing ever to prove that he was really behind any of this, um, the fact that there was a resignation letter that Yolanda was going to quit and that she was not fired, that she was actually going to quit. Um, that's, you know, that's interesting. You know, it it, it is. There, there, look, there's a lot of things here that are somewhat interesting. And, and then you have her family, her niece, her nephew, I forgot what the other chick was to her. I don't know, maybe another niece or I, I'm not even really sure. And they're over there. They're like, oh, man, all this stuff is in the storage. And look, people are looking at Yolanda like she's this evil person. And she's not. They're, you know, her and Selena were friends. I, again, I, I never heard anybody say that Yolanda and Selena were never friends. As a matter of fact, I heard the complete opposite. I heard that they actually truly were friends. So that's not really any new news to me. And that Selena really trusted Yolanda with some of her, you know, darkest, darkest secrets. When in reality, there was only really one secret, if I remember correctly, which I would say is a dark secret. And that's really her having the affair with the doctor in Monterrey. And whether that's true or not, I don't know. That's up in the air. That's speculation. But I'll get to that in a second, whether that matters or not. But, um, you know, the store, I guess the store in San Antonio wasn't making money. It was actually kind of going down. Uh, you know, it was just quite a few things that Yolanda really did not, uh, you know, get along with Abraham well at all. He was a very strict, you know, threatening man. And I guess at some point he told her he was going to kill her or something like that. And they're painting this picture that they wanted her out of the picture so they could get Selena back because it seemed like Selena was, you know, spending a lot of time with Yolanda and focusing more on a lot of the stores and the clothes 
that she really wanted to get into and some of the stores that she has set up where Abraham really wanted her to focus more on her music. It's like, no, no, you are a musician. You need to focus on music. All this other stuff is, you know, a little side hustle, but don't let that stuff get involved. Don't let it affect your music. So, you know, that's kind of the paint, uh, picture they were painting and, you know, Yolanda getting um, assaulted in Mexico in the restroom and then her receiving a letter uh, later on saying like, yeah, you know what? I'm the one that hired them. I'm the chauffeur of the doctor. But yet the letter cannot be proven to be true either. So why is all of this interesting and why did it not matter? Okay. And there's, by the way, there's so much more. There's so much more. Okay. Um. It's interesting because, yeah, I get it. You know, everybody has some sort of skeleton in their closet, right? Maybe everyone isn't the sweet little angel that they believe uh, for, to, for them to be, right? It's like, oh, man, this person was such a great, great person, never did anything wrong. Well, no, everybody's human, right? Everybody has their flaws and all. And maybe all this stuff was true. You know, maybe all this stuff was true. And I, when I one thing I never, I didn't understand once I finished watching it, I was left a little perplexed. I'm like, okay, to the niece and the nephew and the other girl that was there on the table. Like, you guys are over here opening these boxes and showing this evidence. And I'm like, and, and, and it's almost like you guys are putting it out there like, oh, once we get through this, you guys are going to see. You guys are going to see the truth. And it's like, okay, all right, cool. So that's what I was waiting for. But it never got there. Because Yolanda shot Selena. So all this other stuff, I'm not sure why it matters. I'm not saying it's not interesting. And I'm not saying um, don't watch this uh, little docuseries. But ultimately, and, and the niece, the one, she seemed like she was the one running the table, right? At the end, yeah, she just, she says it. She's crying. She's all like, yeah, I know she shot her. So it's like, okay, then what's, I, I'm not sure what it is that you're trying to prove. Now, Yolanda purchased the gun. She says she doesn't know how a gun works. It's a revolver, by the way. Okay, when you're dealing with a clip, I get it. There's a little bit more knowledge that you need to know. But when it comes to a revolver, I'm not really sure how <laughs> you pull the trigger. But nonetheless, you know, Yolanda, her story is it was an accident. Selena was very upset. Yolanda uh, said, do you want me to prove my loyalty to you? Like, do you want me to blow my brains out? She clocked a hammer back on a revolver and put it up to her head, to her own head, because she was going to blow her brains out, I guess. And again, this is Yolanda's story. Spoiler alert. And then Selena says, no, don't do that grabs her hand and then puts it down. And then Selena turns to go out, I guess, opens the door. And then Yolanda with the same hand, the, with the same hand that she's holding the gun points it up at Selena to tell her, no, close the door. And the gun went off. So that it was an accident. Okay. Nothing. Nothing in this series, in this docuseries, nothing proves that that's what happened. 
So that's why I'm saying I don't know where her family again, you know, I'm not I'm not disrespecting uh, her niece and her nephew or anything like that. But they started the show with this whole kind of like, we're going to show you guys, we're going to show you guys the truth. We're going to show you guys like really what's up, like what really happened. But no evidence shows that that's what actually happened. All the evidence is really just putting a little bit of dirt on Selena about her having an affair. How close Yolanda and Selena were as friends. And how much of an a-hole and threatening Abraham was, which is why apparently Yolanda purchased the gun. Because apparently she was fearful for her life. But none of it nothing at all showed that it was Yolanda putting the gun up to her own head, Selena trying to stop her or does stop her, Selena walking out the door, and then by accident, Yolanda uses the same hand to point at her, say, no, close the door, and the gun went off. Nothing at all. So, then I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be telling. I'm not really sure what everything on here, you know, after I finished watching this, I'm scratching my head saying like, wait a second, I'm, I, I don't, I, what did we learn here? She shot her. She shot her in the back, by the way. So I thought we we're going to find out some evidence that proved Yolanda's story to be true. But no, there's zero, zero evidence other than, you know, her word. But that was it. But, you know, then you got her family right there talking about like, oh, so if she was telling the truth about this, what else can she be telling the truth about? Like I, all this other stuff, all these other things that you guys are bringing out outside of the affair that Selena was, again, apparently, we don't know that for to be true, apparently having. And yes, the doctor did come out, I think it was in 2012, and said that, yeah, that was true. Okay, fine, so be it. So let's say all this stuff is true. It didn't change the fact or doesn't change the fact that Yolanda shot her. And there's zero proof to uh, say her story is true. So... And, you know, the embezzlement money, that that's a little hard one to swallow, man. It really is. That's, that's a little hard one to take. But even if it is true, even if all of it is true, Yolanda shot her. Yolanda shot and killed her. So um, what do I think about it? Uh, look, I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad I did. It was interesting. I was intrigued, but at the end, I was just kind of like, well, I didn't really learn anything that fresh for me to be like, wow, I think of this whole situation completely different or somewhat different, or I see it in a whole new different light now. No, I don't. I still somewhat see it the same. I don't, it didn't. And I don't mean to say change my mind or anything. It didn't have to change my mind, but I don't, it doesn't, again, doesn't make, make me look at it from a different perspective or anything of that sort. So it is interesting. Uh, nonetheless, it is somewhat entertaining to a certain extent. I think at some point it kind of ran a little bit dry here and there. But uh, nonetheless, man, sad situation all the way around. And by the way, should Yolanda, she's served 30 years, you know, should she be let go? I mean, she doesn't have, I don't know how old she is, but she's got to be up there in age. Should she be released? You guys let me know, man. Should they release her next year? I mean, 30 years is a long time. What if she is telling the truth? But at the same time, for me at least, somebody who clocks a hammer back on a revolver that's loaded puts it up to their head. 
to me, that's already screaming some sort of insanity. So there had to, for me, there had to be something wrong with her already to do something like that. If she's going to, you know, blow her brains out. But nonetheless, you guys let me know what you guys think. Did you guys see this? Or do you guys refuse to watch it? Does any of your family refuse to watch it? My beautiful crazy local wife, she refuses to watch it. She does not want to watch it. Because apparently it's putting money in uh, Yolanda's uh, books or something like that. I don't know. I didn't look that deep into it. But my beautiful crazy local wife will not watch this. Am I glad I watched it? Yeah, I'm glad I watched it. But it didn't really pay off really too much it, it was entertaining though but uh you guys let me know what you guys thought about it cholo trucker moss moves and shows i'll catch you guys on next one